Hi, welcome to Ride and Steal. I'm Kristen Walton and I'm here at Turner today at Twitchell's Airport. We are here for a very special event. Now, Barry, can you tell us what we're here for? Yeah, this is Cora Shriner's first annual ride for children and we're raising money for Shriner's Hospitals for Children. Great. Now, this looks like a very special event. I'm looking forward to talking to you a little bit later to see what else is going on and how it was organized. We'll be right back after these announcements. Hi, I'm here today at Twitchell's Airport in Turner, and I'm here with three handsome guys from the Shriners. And I'm going to have them tell us a little bit about today, how they organized it, and what, what's been going on, and uh, what this means to everybody, and where all of this money goes to. So I have Randy, is that right? I have Randy over here. He doesn't want to talk. He's going to be eye candy. <laughs> He's going to be a supporter here. And then I have Barry, right? Barry, yes. And Barry, where are you from? I'm from Turner. And how long have you been a Shriner? Oh, uh, 25 years or so. Oh, that's great. And, and I have Tim over here, right? Yes, that's correct. And where are you from, Tim? I also live here in Turner. Oh, you do? Great. Good place to have it then because you're all right here locally. So, Barry, tell us a little bit about what your part in all of this was today. Well, I'm the potentate of Chorus Ryan this year, which means I'm in charge of the whole place for one year. That's it, and I'm done after a year. And so I get to plan some events during the year. And this is a, a new event for Cora that we planned for this year. And Randy's been helping me as chair of the event to put on a uh, fundraiser for Shriners Hospital for Children. Right, cool. This is a great place, and this was a great event that you really did. So how did you come up with this idea? Well, I've been a Harley rider for 20 years or more and been to a lot of rallies. And we really don't have a rally in Maine that's like the ones that I enjoy. And so we, Randy and I worked together to put this rally together that's like ones that I've been to that I had a good time at. And that's what, uh, that was the whole focus of it. Oh, I think it's a great idea. Now today, is it a fundraiser as well as awareness of what the Shriners are about? It's, or is it? Yes, yeah, both least. It's, it's a fundraiser, but the awareness part of it is as big as anything. So that's, uh, it's important for us to get the message out about Shriners Hospitals for Children and, and uh, you know, get the word out that we are, we are available to help kids that are, have some issues. All right, we're gonna do an old I think this is really great. I think that a lot of people don't realize what Shriners really do. So we really would like you to tell us, um, Tim, can you tell us more about the hospitals and um, how many there are? And certainly, certainly. My name is Tim Luttrell. I'm fortunate enough to sit on the board at Shriners Hospital for Children in Springfield, Mass. Uh, we have two hospitals here in New England, one our Burns Center in Boston, then our Orthopedic Center uh, in Springfield. It's a uh, network of 22 hospitals across North America and Canada. Um, we serve uh, children under the age of 18 with orthopedic care, burn care, cleft lip and palate, uh, without financial obligation to their patient or the patient's family. Oh, I think that's great. Now, how do you come about finding the children that you are to help? Because they don't always just go to the Shiner's Hospital. Do you look them? look for them? Absolutely. One of the things that uh, these events like this, these fundraisers are, they're twofold. Obviously, we want to raise funds to support our hospitals, but more importantly, we want to raise awareness about what we do with our hospitals. We're constantly looking for patients to take care of because that's what we're in. We're in the kid business. Um, in May, each year here in Maine, our Northern Temple and a Temple based in Bangor and our Temple here based in Lawston, Chorus Riders, we have what we call screening clinics at various locations throughout the state, and that's when we screen patients for possible ad admission to Shriners Hospital here in New England. Oh, that's really cool. Do you also do, um, do you go to people's homes if they want you to, to do assessments there, or anything? No, yeah, there's no end to what we would do. I mean, you know, we, we're here again. We're in the kid business, and if that's what we need to do, then that's what we'll do. It's mainly, it's, it's a staffing thing, you know, and having the proper uh, doctors available to to uh, examine the child to make sure it meets the criteria in our hospital. So. And our, our patients are mostly a referral from some other hospital or for some other doctor. So particularly in burns, which is more of a, tra a traumatic or a trauma injury, they go to another hospital first and then they're transferred to, to Shriners in Boston. So it's uh, a lot of what we do is referrals from other docs and other hospitals. Uh, that's cool. I'm going to say just a little bit of something. My son, you guys came to our house when he was a little boy, when he was burned, when he was uh, one year old. Oh, wow. So I knew about the Shiners back then, and I've always admired that you guys came to our house. So I just appreciated that so much. So that's why I asked. I wanted people to know that that is available, that you do that. So I also want to know what you have involved here today. 
what was going on, what do we have going on tonight. Just tell us about the event itself. Well, we've had uh, bands. We're on, we're on our second band now. Way Down Willies is playing, and we had Altertones earlier, and tonight we've got Broad Street Band playing. And so we've got vendors set up, food and concessions and T-shirts and all kinds of stuff that we're selling uh, to, to uh, raise money. We also had a shrine parade where shrine units from all over southern Maine participated in a parade. And tonight we've got a fireworks display at 9 o'clock. Oh, that sounds really fun. Yeah. Uh, you had a lot of bikes here and you had some old antiques cars too. That was really nice. So I guess the word got out really well. So are you going to continue this next year? Yeah, we're going to continue it next year for sure. Yeah, yeah we're going to take some ideas that we've had from today and try to build on it so to make it a, a bigger event next year. I really think it can be a big event. Yeah. I really do. It's been a lot of fun today. I think we could get a lot more people out there, but now that we're on Ride with Steel, I think that we can really get the word out and get some more people out here for you next year. Okay, great. That'd be it's great. really been a great day. I've been feeling really great about the people that have been around here. It's very upbeat. It's very, very friendly. Everybody's talking or everybody has just really been nice. So you're great. doing a great thing here, guys, and I really appreciate you doing this. And we appreciate you being here to support it. We really appreciate it. Oh, that. thank Thanks. you. I'm really glad we did. It really touches my heart to see the, the little girl Maddie here and what you've done for her. And it's really, really special. Good. So really, Good. Thank, you. thank you. And you too. Thank you. <laughs> Join Ride and Steel and Big Moose Harley Davidson on March 9th for our Reggae Beach Party and for our fourth annual Cabin Fever Reliever. The weekend starts at noon at Big Moose Harley Davidson with reggae music provided by Stream Reggae. Wear your beachwear and win prizes. And then later on in the day, Charity Ride organizers and their supporters can join us at the Senator Inn in Augusta, Maine for a Ride and Steel's fourth annual Cabin Fever Reliever. Thousands of dollars worth of giveaways will be provided. Music by Mad Castle and more. Go to rideandsteel.com for details. Hey, Chorus Rhino Log Rollers, how are you? We're doing <laughs> So you are organizing the parade, is that what you said? Organizing? Not quite. Okay. We get to we, we get doing. we get to play in the parade. You get to play in the parade. So yes. what do you get to play? We get to play in these trucks right here. Cool. How many of you are there? Today, probably 22. Wow. Cool. Yeah. So you're the one that's been doing this for how long? Almost 30 years. We do about 28, 29, 30. Our last ones are in uh, December. End of May to start of December. We've done parades in the snow. That must be very challenging, but it also must be a lot of fun. Now you're Dickie, is that D what Dick Norcross, yep. Looking forward to seeing... Um, the parade and watching you guys are always so much fun. Yeah, we have a good time doing it, and yeah. it's for the kids. Oh yeah, kids love it. Oh, yeah. I had three boys, and that was what they looked forward to in the parades was yep. all of you. What made you want to do the Shriners? Is there some special reason why, or you just love to help the grew kids. up with it? I, I can remember as a kid, trucks. my father used to be a um, he used to belong to a program in the Shrine where we'd actually give parents to kids rides to Springfield, and I remember going with a family to Springfield as a kid. And the family spoke Spanish, so we couldn't really understand what they were saying and stuff. But when we went there, and the, the look on the child's face when he saw his parents come in, and then when he saw my father, he like you know he ran right up to my father and gave him a hug. And at that point there, I was like, well, that's that's what we need to do. You know, so that it means something to it you. Mean, it means a lot, you know. And that's I've what got, we like to hear. I mean, that's I've got really three awesome. Little ones myself. Oh, you do. You know. They're five, seven, and nine, and they already can't wait to to join the shrine, and they know what it's all about. And it's a legacy in the family, yeah. then. Yeah, it's it's a huge family thing. The the, the old man that's in used to be in charge. He's he's our godfather. We call him my grandfather. He's, he's more of a grandfather than our real grandfather. Because you grew up around him, grew and you grew up, up knowing him. him. We've pushed these trucks in tons of parades when we were kids, and when we were kids, we were like, yep, we can't wait till we get that old to be in one. Right. Uh, that, oh, that's the, only, the only bad thing about being in the parades is we don't get to watch them anymore because we're always at the end of the parade behind the horses. <laughs> uh, I know what that's like. I've been in a few parades. It's more fun being on the other side watching yeah. the parade than being in it sometimes, but it's fun to be in it too. You guys are doing a great thing. Thank the you. kids really love it, so I mean, it really is special that you're doing this. Uh, it, and I'm glad that it means something to you guys. It's really nice to hear that. A lot of people like to hear that. Yeah, and I've only been in the Shrine for five years, and I've already put a kid through the Shrine Hospital. You have? Yeah. And how did... I did that two years ago. One of the kids I knew was 
in 4-H and stuff because I was in 4-H and stuff and he had spiniosis and I talked to his father about it and I got a hold of the guy that's talking over there, Tim, in charge and we got him down there and now he's uh, he's 50% better down there at that hospital than he was in me at any hospital. And how long has he been there? Oh, he, he, he just had treatment, surgery, but his, he had a back brace. Oh, okay. But his, his spine was curvy, yeah. so now he's 50% better, his spine's 50% straighter than they was in Portland. Portland, it was only 10%, and they said they probably wouldn't get no better. He went down there, and now it's 50%. Now, the Shrine Hospitals, they have specialists there that are yep. from... Yeah, we specialize uh, in orthopedic. Okay. Um, you know, that Springfield Hospital is an orthopedic hospital. Oh, okay. Are all the hospitals different or are they all orthopedic? There's, there's different or? categories. I mean, Boston, we have the Burn Hospital. Right, I remember that one. That's the one I knew about. This was trying to get my brother over here to say 22 Shriners Hospitals between... 23. Oh. 23. 23. I see. Oh, there are 23. Between Mexico, United States, and Canada. Ha operating budget, what, a million dollars a day or something like that? Free of charge, yeah. 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 Free of charge. That's what we do here. Raise the money for all that. Royce here of Ride and Steel, and I'm back at Big Moose Harley Davidson in Portland, Maine. And standing with me is Betty Reynolds. Betty Reynolds has been on an anti-bullying mission for the past couple of years, and soon she has an event coming up called Be Inspired. 
Why don't you tell the folks watching what this is all about, Betty? Okay. Well, it's going to be May 9th at the Portland Elks Lodge in Portland, Maine, from 5 to 9. We've got an incredible lineup of musicians coming, including Jillian Jensen from the X Doctor, Jim Mayer from the Jimmy Bucket Band, uh, along with Shannon Seelig from Maine here, and as well as the Bayo Twins, the Reynolds Twins. We've got co-CEO of Archie Comic Books coming to help us out with uh, the new anti-bullying comic book that just came out through there, and just... Uh, uh, a really good lineup of people coming. So we're this is a donation only event. Uh, we're asking schools to participate by um, being a part of the contest, the arts and literacy contest. And for more information on that, you can come to uh, call me at four one five three five two zero. And that would be Betty Reynolds. And of course, you can always find uh, this information on rideandsteel.com as well. Go to our calendar and check out the uh, uh, calendar uh, pages there. And uh, as spring rolls around, you know, the schools are asking for Bikers Against Bullying to, to uh, ride into their schools and help their kids out. We have a lot of free things that we're giving out at this event, and we're hoping you know, that the first 200 people will be getting you know, as many free things as possible. We are raising money for three organizations that are going into the schools and making a difference. So please join us. Excellent. Thank you, Betty. All right. I am here with the family which has benefited from the Cora Shriners Children's Hospital. We have a little girl here, Maddie, that we want to talk about. And we have her dad, Shane, here. So, doing, Shane, man? tell us where you're from. From South Portland. And tell us a little bit about your family and about what is going on. You first became a Mason, is that right? This is correct. We didn't know anything about Shriners or Masonry before Maddie was a patient. When she was a little over a year old, we found out there was something wrong with her hips called hip dysplasia. Um, and around at the same time, we brought her to a clinic for the Shriners Hospitals. She became a patient. She had her first surgery just before she turned two. And she had her second surgery. She's four and a half now. She had a second surgery about three weeks ago. Okay, so uh, you, I heard you talking earlier that you didn't know about the Shriners before you heard of they came to you about your daughter, is that right? That's correct. Um, a family member saw a flyer at their workplace about the clinic that was being held. I didn't know anything about their hospitals. I didn't know anything about Shriners other than that. They were in parades and circuses before this. So well, your daughter was in a Portland hospital before this, and when you took her down to Shriners, they made a big difference, is that right? She actually had just been diagnosed. She wasn't in a hospital yet. But being at Shriners, we didn't have to worry about the financial aspect. We were able to focus on just taking care of our little girl. Um, we weren't kicked out of the hospital a day after surgery. They let us stay there until they were sure that we knew exactly how to take care of her. And they also had the best care possible. They are the front edge of their research, and they do a great job. So they help you from the very beginning to get to the right hospital that you need to because there's a lot of different hospitals that they um, specialize in different areas for children, is that right? And they were able to help you be able to find out which one to go to and all the financial part of it they do for you? Yes, that's correct. They um, have 22 hospitals in North America. Most of them are focusing on orthopedics. They also do cleft lip and palate, uh, spinal cord injuries, and burns. There's a Burns Hospital in Boston. There is a orthopedics hospital in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, and they were able to help us through that. They never ask for payment for anything. Everything is offered to the patients free of. They donate a lot of it, don't they, to you? And every patient is different about what they. Oh, is this your, is this your daughter too? my second daughter. This is Acadia. Hi, how are you? Can you say hi? No? Say hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's okay. So tell us a little bit about Maddie and what your family has gone through and how is she handling everything? She's handling everything pretty good right now. There was an adjustment period where she got used to being in a cast, and of course that's going to be new for anyone, especially a four-year-old. But she's getting along now. We have a lot of people helping us out and you know, giving us a hand, stop by our house, visiting her, and that's been great. It keeps her mind distracted from being in a body cast. How is she when she's not in her cast in between surgeries? Um, for the first surgery, she had just learned to walk right before the surgery happened. Um, and then within a month was able to relearn to walk um, while even braced. Um, and she's been walking ever since that until the surgery. So 
And how will she be after the surgery? Will she need any more after this? Um, we're hopeful that this will be it until later in life. Um, she will have arthritis and other difficulties like that probably, just because her hip just isn't normal. But um, she should possibly be able to walk right out of the cast when we take it off. Um, might need a little physical therapy. Well, um, she just went on um, the airplane ride. How does she like that? She loved the airplane ride. The whole time she kept saying, I'm a birdie, I'm a birdie. Oh, how sweet. Did your little one go too? No, she stayed here. Yeah, was it just the two of you that went up or the, did your wife go as well? No, my father went. My father oh, okay. held her and then Maddie asked that I went, that I would go also, so of I course. jumped in. That makes a lot of sense. So you now are a Shriner yourself. No, was it because of your daughter you decided to become a Shriner? Yes and no. When we were at the hospital, I saw a lot of kids that have more difficult situations than what Maddie has. Um, her, she had a little limp before the first surgery, and there's kids with bent bones and their clubbed feet, and just seeing what the other kids are going through, and the fact that they aren't asked to to pay anything for that. Um, it was that was huge to me, and I wanted to do what I could to make sure that other kids got that opportunity as well. Um, about, I think it was about a year after Maddie's first surgery that I became a Mason. And a month after I was a Mason, I became a Shriner as well. Well, I think that's really great that it means a lot to you that you want to pay it forward to help other people. Have a great day. Thank you so much for all that you do, and thank you for talking with us. Thank you. Steve Morris here of Ride and Steel, and I'm back at Big Moose Harley Davidson in Portland, Maine. And standing with me is Betty Reynolds. Betty Reynolds has been on an anti-bullying mission for the past couple of years, and soon she has an event coming up called Be Inspired. Why don't you tell the folks watching what this is all about, Betty? Hey, well, it's going to be May 9th at the Portland Elks Lodge in Portland, Maine, from 5 to 9. We've got an incredible lineup of musicians coming, including Jimmy and Jensen from the X Factor, Jim Mayer from the Jimmy Buffett Band, uh, along with Shannon Seelig from Maine here, and as well as the Veo Twins, the Reynolds Twins. We've got co-CEO of Archie Comic Books coming to help us out with uh, the new anti-bullying comic book that just came out there, and just a, a really good lineup of people coming. So we're this is a donation only event. Uh, we're asking schools to participate by um, being a part of the contest, the Arts and Literacy Contest. And for more information on that, you can come to a uh, call me at 415-3520, and that would be Betty Reynolds. And of course, you can always find uh, this information on rideandsteel.com as well. Go to our calendar and check out the uh, uh, calendar uh, pages there. And uh, as spring rolls around, the, you know, the schools are asking for Bikers Against Bullying to, to uh, ride into their schools and help their kids out. We have a lot of free things that we're giving out at this event, and we're hoping you know, that the first 200 people will be getting you know, as many free things as possible. We are raising money for three organizations that are going into the schools and making a difference. So please join us. Excellent. Thank you, Betty. All right. Hi, we are here at the end of a beautiful summer day here in Turner at Twitchers Airport. I am again here with Barry. We just wanted to find out how the day is going for you and uh, is it has it gone the way you expected? And just tell us a little bit about today and how you feel. Yeah, the day's been great, really. We've had a, a good participation from our Shrine group. We have 2,600 Shriners in Southern Maine, and we've had a great contingent of Shriners here today. A lot of public, a lot of people, a lot of people learning about Shriners Hospitals for Children, and that's that's what we're all about today. So it's been a great day for us, and we really appreciate everything that's uh, all the people who supported us. So thank I you. think it's great. Now, if people want to become a, a Shriner themselves, yeah. Um, are you looking for people to join as well today? Yes. Now, how would they be able to do that? Absolutely. If they go to chorusshriners.org, they can, they can get any information they want to on our website. Great. So I want to thank you so much thank for you. everything that you're doing and for everything today. So I want to encourage everybody to join us next year. This has been a really great event. I look forward to seeing what the rest of the day comes to be for you guys. So I want to thank all of you for watching Bride and Steel. Saturday, August 4th, was a busy day, and I want to thank Kristen Walton and Tom Atwood for covering the Cora Shriners' first annual Care for Kids Riding. And I hope you'll consider supporting this event in 2013. In next week's program, we'll take you to the Eagles Make-A-Wish ride that was held on this same day and covered by Sherry and Darren Burgoyne. Although the snow continues to fall, 
Riding season is not too far away, and our calendar on our website will be filling up with lots of charity rides and events. Please go to www.rideandsteel.com and register as a member. Everyone is welcome, and anyone from Maine and New Hampshire can post their upcoming ride on our site. Until next time, thank you for watching Ride and Steel.